A case that shook our state, Coralie Chun Matayoshi talks to Mikey on how the Kaloha conspiracy case is continuing in today's edition of What's the Law? Everybody, I am bringing back our good friend Coralie Chun Matayoshi because I needed to know more on this Kaloha conspiracy. But first of all, Coralie, hello, good to see you. Good to see you too. Okay, so let's just get straight into it. Um, I want to know all the juicy details because over the past year, you know, you did a number of podcasts um, on the Kaloha case, the Kaloha conspiracy. But recently, you spoke with Alexander Silver, who I believe is the former federal defender who broke the case. Um, right. But what's interesting, Coralie, is that he told you that this saga is far from over. Um, please explain. So that's right, Mikey. Um, the investigation is still ongoing and the grand jury continues to meet even after the Kealohas were convicted and sent to prison. So more indictments may be on the horizon. So most recently, former city managing director Roy Amamiya and former corporation counsel Donna Leong and former police commissioner chair Max Sorg were charged with conspiracy to defraud the United States government. Now, Cordy, I want to ask you, what more is needed in order to prove this conspiracy? A conspiracy is an agreement between two or more people to commit a crime. Conspiracies are easier to prove because you don't have to show that the underlying crime was actually committed, just that an agreement was made, there was criminal intent, and proof of an overt act taken towards committing that crime. Players in a conspiracy don't need to know the entire scheme. They can be held liable for the whole conspiracy, even if they only played a minor role. Since the only charge in the indictment is conspiracy and not the underlying crimes, if two of the three defendants were somehow able to show that they didn't agree to commit a crime, then even the third person, if they were guilty, could not be convicted because a conspiracy requires an agreement between two or more people and you can't conspire by yourself. So it'll be interesting to see what happens and also look out for my next podcast uh, next week on the English and Cullen indictments. That'll be posted on Monday. We're, I want to talk a little bit more about child welfare services and foster children. Now, there's been many heartbreaking cases of child abuse um, from Peter Boy Kama to the most recent one, which we all know about, which is um, Ariel Isabella Kalua. What parents can properly care for their children or even abuse them? The government plays a role in protecting them, right? Right. So when there is harm or imminent harm because of abuse or neglect, a child can be removed from their home without notice or a court order. A petition has to be filed and a court hearing must be held within two business days. Now, most cases involve substance abuse, domestic violence, or mental health issues. Sometimes a child is allowed to remain in the home with court monitoring and a service plan. But if safety is an issue, the court can order the child into foster care. Over half of the time, Relatives like aunties and uncles and grandmas step up to take the child in under a special licensing process, called, including criminal background check, home inspections, and training. How many children are in the foster care system, and how do kids like Ariel Isabella get put in there? So there's about 1,500 children in foster care homes in Hawaii. Most cases involve abuse and neglect, but sometimes the child is abandoned or the parents die or are incarcerated. If the biological parents cannot provide a safe home within a reasonable amount of time, their parental rights are terminated and the child is put up for adoption or placed into a permanent guardianship. Cordy, you mentioned criminal records a little bit earlier. Um, can a foster parent have a criminal record? And if so, is there an oversight um, if a child is placed in their care? Foster parents do undergo a criminal background check, a child abuse and neglect check, a sex offender registry checks, and also are fingerprinted. When they have a criminal conviction that is older and a clean record in between, there, it is still possible to become a foster parent, as was the case of Sonny Kalua, whose um, criminal convictions happened over 20 years ago. Foster placements are monitored, but the pandemic made it more difficult because schools were closed and visits were virtual. So much question, so little time, um, but <laughs> there's, there's so much other things that we can look forward to as far as like your podcast. What can our viewers um, look forward to when it comes to your podcast? So next month is taxes and tasers, so stay tuned.
Courtney, thank you so much for talking to me, talking to our viewers, um, clearing up a little bit of the questions that I know myself as well as our viewers had in mind. Um, everyone will have more information on catron2.com, including um, the direct link to Coralie's podcast if you guys want to check out some past episodes as well. Thank you so much, Coralie. Thank you, Mikey.